Hello and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of a worm. Worm is a general term for a large group of invertebrate animals that include earthworms, roundworms, flatworms, and more. The worm we'll be looking at today is an earthworm, which is probably the worm most familiar to you. So now let's take a look at the external anatomy. Earthworms are members of the phylum Annelida. The word Annelida means ringed and refers to a series of ringed segments that make up the body of a worm. So you can see these segments. Here's one segment. There's another one here and another one here. These segments are called annuli. Each annulus is covered with tiny hairs called setae on the underside, which helps the worm move. You can't really see them, but when I run my probe along the worm, I can feel the setae catch on my probe. So, when the muscles along the worm extend, these setae dig into the soil and act as anchors. Then, the muscles contract, and the anchored setae pulls the rear part of the worm's body forward. You can also see this raised band on one end of the worm. This is called the clitellum, and its function is to secrete a viscous fluid that forms a cocoon for the worm's eggs. Now, this clitellum also helps us orient the worm. The part closer to the clitellum here is the anterior end, meaning this is the head. The other end here would be the posterior end, meaning towards the rear. And this darker side is the dorsal side, or the back. And when I flip it over, this lighter side is the ventral side, or the stomach. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. Make sure the worm is placed so that the dorsal side faces up. Then, pin the worm diagonally across the dissection tray at the head and at the end of the tail. This makes sure that the worm doesn't move around too much when we dissect it. Start cutting right behind the clitellum, so here. This is because the only structure that is here is the intestine, so even if you mess up here, you have plenty of practice before you have to move up into the head, here, where there's a lot more important organs. In my worm, there's already a cut here where it was injected, so I'll start here. So once you make the incision, lift away the skin with forceps and pin it back at around a 30 degree angle. As I peel away the skin, you can see these flaps attached to the skin that divide the worm into segments or annuli. These flaps are called the septum. Now I'm just going to keep cutting down until I reach the posterior end. Now I'll switch direction and cut up towards the head. You'll see some white silvery stuff catching on the edge of my scalpel. This is called the cuticle. It's an outer layer of the worm that protects it from abrasion and from drying out. So if I try to peel it back, you can see it kind of looks like cling wrap. Now keep cutting towards the anterior end.
Near the very end of the worm's head is the brain. It's very hard to see because it's very small. But you can see it has two lobes. So one lobe here and another lobe right here. From the brain, a ventral nerve cord runs the length of the body, which we'll see later. Now at the beginning of the digestive system is the pharynx, which is right here. The pharynx acts as a suction pump to draw food in through the mouth, which is right here. The pharynx also secretes mucus that lubricates the food, so it can travel down the rest of the digestive system. Now down here are the reproductive organs, so these yellow things. And worms are hermaphrodites, which means that they have both male and female reproductive organs. The quote-unquote male organs are the seminal vesicles, which produce sperm. The seminal vesicles are these large structures here, 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 and here. The quote-unquote female organs are the seminal receptacles, which receive sperm. These are the smaller structures, so it's right here, 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 and here. So now let's move all of these reproductive organs aside. So now you can see the worms' hearts. Earthworms have five hearts, which are each in an arch shape. These five hearts are called aortic arches, and you can see them right here. So one, two, three, four, and five. So you can see each of them looks kind of like an arch. So these aortic arches are basically modified versions of regular blood vessels that pump blood throughout the worm's body. Oh, and these aortic arches are also pink because the circulatory system of this worm has been injected with red latex. You may notice that worms have no lungs. They breathe through their skin. Air dissolves on the mucus of their skin, so they must stay moist to breathe. If worms dry out, they suffocate. And as fresh air is taken into the skin, oxygen is drawn into the worm's circulatory system and the aortic arches here, then pump that oxygenated blood throughout the body. Now what's buried under all these aortic arches is the esophagus. So let's look for it right here. The esophagus connects the pharynx from before right here to the crop right here. The crop is a sac-like organ that stores the food until it can be moved to the next chamber, which is the gizzard, right here. Notice that the crop is soft and thin. You can squish it really easily. But in contrast, when I poke the gizzard, right here, it's really hard and it barely moves. The gizzard has a thicker muscle lining than the crop because it needs those muscles to grind up the food. And because worms don't have any teeth, they swallow little bits of rock or sand to help break down the food in the gizzard. And once the food leaves the gizzard, it enters this really long intestine. So let's zoom out. So the intestine here is where the nutrients from the food are absorbed. And it's really long to maximize surface area for absorption. And at the end of the intestine, right, here is the anus, which is where waste is expelled. Earthworm droppings are rich in nitrogen and other nutrients that are beneficial for plant growth. Because of this, having earthworms in your soil makes for a great natural fertilizer. And you can see the intestine is surrounded by these tiny little pink threads, and these are blood vessels. Once the intestine absorbs nutrients from the food, these blood vessels then distribute those nutrients through the body of the worm. Now I'm going to move all the way back to the head region and push aside all of these other organs. Now you can see this white dread-like thing running along the length of the body. I'm going to try to pull it up. There, there we go. So this is the ventral nerve cord, and it's connected to the brain way up at the top. 
This is basically the spinal cord of the worm. Each segment of the worm is connected to this cord, allowing earthworms to move and respond to light, touch, chemicals, vibrations, and more. Worms actually have no eyes, ears, or nose, but they do have nerves in their skin and muscles that can detect light and vibrations. The earthworm's body is also covered with chemoreceptors, which are cells that detect the chemicals in the soil, allowing the worm to quote-unquote taste things. Going back to the intestine, you can see this large pink thread that runs along the dorsal side. This is a dorsal blood vessel, and it's responsible for carrying blood to the front of the earthworm's body. And on the other side, you can see two threads. So this white thread is the ventral nerve cord we saw before and the pink thread next to it is the ventral blood vessel and it's responsible for carrying blood to the back of the earthworm's body. Lastly, I'm just going to cut open the intestine and you can see all the digested soil. Alright, that's the end of the earthworm dissection. Thanks for staying folks. Here's a worm fact to send you on your way. Worms lay eggs in cocoons, which look kind of like tiny lemons. Each cocoon can contain up to 20 eggs, but usually only some of these eggs survive to hatch. <laughs>